Okay, so what we've got in here is number one, on bank one, that's my like my basic dirty rhythm sound. It's like this. And then with more gain. Sound. So we move on from dirt. More dirt. Dirt with delay. And my solo. Gain and delay. And now follow me. This is Bjorn, backline tech. Say hi to Bjorn. Hello. What we heard now was the Friedman. This is my new thing. It's the BE100 Deluxe. If you got one of these, make sure that you have the system volume all the way up and regulate on masters. Because that's the way, that's the way it sounds the best. <laughs> this is my old main amp down here. My trusty old master, which I used on a lot of al albums and uh, for 20 years. This is the first one that uh, actually I've played regularly besides this one. This is my clean sound, which we're gonna listen to that in a minute. What we heard now was, was, was just this one, channel one and two. I don't use the clean channel in this one because the Marshall sounds better, whoa. The delay you heard is this one. Uh, I just used the delay. This is spare. Um, now we're gonna listen to one more sound. This one uh, is a uh, sound that some of you might know. I'm gonna play it for you. One song. That was the Proctavia. This boost I used to actually to turn down the level on one preset. And um, this is the first pedal that I ever bought. I think it was 14 years old. And it's still with me. Classic. The boost and the delay I use for the clean sound, which I will show you in a minute. The metal zone is for the song called Reconstruct Reconstructed, if you know that one. What's being built for me is this. It's the interface. The amps go in here. And then a line signal goes to the TC and then to the power amp and then to the delay cabinet. And then it splits it into the clean and dirty cabinet, which I will show in a minute. And this is the loop system, yes, the loop switcher, which switches between uh, the pedals. The pedals are in here. They're sleeping. We don't want to disturb them now. <laughs> also, this input selector is quite handy. The whole idea is to make it as simple as possible. This one is my main one at the moment. 
It's a uh, 59 Les Paul, Murphy Labs. It's um, has good, good brutal attack. We like that. Spare Paul. I've had this for years and years and years. Let's call classic. This is uh, 2000. Okay. Yeah. Good cheap guitars. This guitar is a PRS Mira. It's a good guitar for not a lot of money. I'll show you. Okay. All right. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Magic. It survived. See? This is our uh, throwaway guitar. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's gonna like that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, no different tunings. Only okay. drop D sometimes, and uh, otherwise it's, it's it's standard tuning. All of them. On the Les Pauls, I have 10 to 46. On the Jazz Masters, I have uh, 11 to 48. So it's quite basic, actually. Uh, anyway, Jazz Master 1. It's a 63. I lost the knobs. Otherwise, it's, uh, it's, it, it came with the Jaguar bridge, which is quite... It's, it's better than the original actually um, but let me show you this piece of Wood and plastic and metal is the only material thing on this earth that I would be very unhappy if I lost because it's kind of the. I had never come across a jazz master that sounds like this, so. And I used it on every recording since 2000. I got, I think I got it in 98, 99. And it slowly worked its way into the repertoire, and now it's the favorite. This one, I mean, the whole system. It's Thank like you. for a guy like me, see this one has to have a very clear signal chain. So I want to go from this guitar and out of this cabinet right there as un uncomplicated as possible. So I use this to switch between the pedals and the amp. So I don't have to go through like a, you know, a normal pedal ball. I have to go through all the pedals. So as short as a signal pad as you can get, the more core, more sound you have, the more body you have in the, your sound. So that's my philosophy. So this sound here is basically, follow me, it's the Jazzmaster and the, this is a regular 4x12 four, four uh, with vintage 30s and, and then we use this amp. This one, not a lot of uh, gain, a little more on the master. And then, yeah, open this, go! We need a professional. We need real manpower. <laughs> so, it's the booster. No, first it's the, the compressor, and then it's the booster. 
and then it's the delay at the margin. And it's been like that since this song was written, actually. Uh, Sleep My Day Away, which is like what made this song. That's been my spaghetti western sound forever. And, and how did you come up with that sound, actually? Because I had to. Because we were we were kids, we we thought let's make this sound, this kind of spaghetti western sound, and, and mix it up with some rock. And and okay, how do you do that? So you have a you have a guitar with a single coil. Yeah. And then you have the delay or reverb kind of thing, and then you just have to make the doing. How do you get the doing? You do. <laughs> then you have the compression, the delay. And no reverb. You can have. It, well, it depends. I, I use delay. You, you might want to have the reverb, but I think the reverb tends to not work in a live situation. Then I think the delay, but I make it soft, like it's not, doesn't have a lot of attack. I cut off the top and the bottom, high cut, low cut. So it's like, so it doesn't interfere with the, the, the original signal. And I just have it on one time. I don't tap or anything. I just just one timing. That's basically that signature sound. It's those things, and the rest is up to you and your fingers. We need to show you this. This is a 57, the one we always use, and we always want to have. And, but this, now the new thing is to pair it with the Royer and put it like this. That's uh, pretty much uh, the new thing, but it works. Uh, when I record, I have a lot of mics on the cabinet. I move them around all the time, different preamps, different mics, and move them around. If you have your mic directly in the center, then you get the most top end. And the further you come away from the center, the less top end you get, and the more bottom end you get. So uh, it's a matter, you can really change the sound by just moving the mic just a little bit. You just experiment with that. But anyway, Let's look at where these two go. They go into this one. You can see here it's the 57 and the Royer. And it's a preamp that Staten built. Caveman Audio again. And supposedly this makes a whole lot of difference. And it does. It sounds great actually. Uh, why do you need a preamp? Only you can make that decision. I suggest that you go and experiment with mics and preamps and try different, different stuff. And then uh, if you try this setup, uh, you might just like it, just like me, and then you go and buy one. Very simple. <laughs> 